I have what it says I have, and I do what it tells me to do. And I love my Bible, so I make this as a confession that I will meditate therein both day and night, on a chapter in the morning and a chapter in the evening. And because I do, my life is blessed. It's no more a mess. Now everything I touch, everything I touch, now turns to success. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we go ahead and welcome everybody that's joining us live on challenge you, remove all the distractions, lock into what God would say, and we believe that you will be blessed. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this, another opportunity to meditate your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We ask you, Father, to shine the light of your word to us today by the Holy Spirit, that we may see it, your word for us in the name of Jesus. We pray that my speech and preaching will not be with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but let it be by demonstration of your spirit and of power, that our faith not rest in the wisdom of a man, but in the power of God. Thank you, Father, for demonstrating yourself in our service today. In Jesus' name, everybody says, Amen. Amen. Open with me in your Bible to the book of 1 John, chapter 4, please. We're concluding a segment that we've been on for the last four weeks about how faith works. We're in a series that's called Accessing Grace by Faith. Even though this is the 14th part in the series, we really haven't talked about how you access grace by faith. We've just been really going over the fundamentals of faith why faith is important, what faith is, how do you get faith, and the fourth part, which we're concluding today, is once you got it, how does it work? The title of the message is Believe the Love. The text is in 1 John chapter 4, from verse 16 through 21. I believe with all my heart this is the passage of scripture that God would for you to understand after today in a way that you can this scripture in your everyday life. So beginning in verse 16, the Bible says that we have known and believed the love. That's very interesting because those two words are different. John, in writing to the church, believers just like you and are, you and I, he includes himself with us in saying that we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. He who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. The day of judgment is the day of test and trial. He goes on to say, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. But if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not yet seen? And then in verse 21, this commandment, we have from him that we, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Now what makes this passage uniquely interesting is the difference between the words known 
and believe. It's one thing to know something, but it's altogether different when you have to believe something. When you believe it, you're not sure. The word believe comes from a Greek word that is from the root word faith. It's like belief has different variations. And so when you talk about someone who believes, you're talking about somebody who has faith. He says, not only have we known the love of God, but we have faith in the love of God. How do you have faith in the love of God? What I want to show you today is that's actually how faith works. Faith works by believing the love that God has for you. All right. Which is why we want to call this message, Believe the Love. We want to challenge you to, in times of your life where it doesn't look good, to believe that God loves you. Oh, yeah. Like I said, it's, it's actually strange, you know. Either you know it or you don't. Either you believe it or you don't. But he says we've done both. We've, we, we've known it and we believe it. Essentially, he's saying that we've all been in a place where we knew that God loved us. Where we know that we know that our no knows that God loves us. And if I were to ask for a show of hands that there would be many of us that beyond the shadow of a doubt, I know God loves me. You may not like me, but I know, come on, I know that God loves me. Yes, sir. You know, David, is, he said, though your father and your mother forsake you. Now, they're being probably the last people to ever leave you in life. I mean, your mama and daddy will stick to you all the stick with you all the way, amen. But if you ever got to a place, and it seemed in David's life because he said it, that though your father or your mother forsake you, the Lord will never forsake you. Amen. The Lord will take you up, is what he said. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So we've all been at that place in life where we knew that God loves us. But there have been for all of us times in our lives where because of the situation or the circumstance where we couldn't tell just by looking on the outside, we had to believe because of what we were going through. We had to believe that he loved us. In other words, we couldn't just look at what we were dealing with to prove that he loved us. We had to believe it. Yes, sir. And I need you to find yourself in that point right there. It's easy for us to know the love, but what we're challenged with is to believe it. Yes. Yes. And sometimes you can go through troubles in life, in relationships, oh, yes. in a marriage, where your body is concerned, where your finances especially are concerned, where, you know, you're looking at like, why is it that I'm struggling financially, where, you know, month in and month out, week in and week Come out, I'm living seemingly hand to mouth, and yet I call myself the child of the Most High God. All right now. It ought to be an oxymoron that a believer is broke. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody. I mean, if, if it is that your father is God, and the Bible says that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, a cattle on a thousand yeah. hills, he yeah. said the silver is mine and the gold is mine. Yeah. Well, if that's the case and he's your father, then why are you broke? Right. He has the power to heal and to deliver. Then why are you still bound? If he can turn the worst around, then why are you still in this marriage with this person and it seems like that even on the outside that even God don't love you All right. because All right. he's left you in this situation. Yes, sir. What I'm challenging you to see today is that in that moment, you've got to believe. Yes. Oh, yeah. In that moment, when it doesn't look like it. All right. Learn to believe. Be firmly persuaded yes, sir. that he does. Oh, yes, sir. That's the essence of the message. There's essentially three things that we're going to look at today. That faith works by love. We're going to look at learning to believe the love. And Jesus has the example. 
And then we're also going to learn that love works by forgiveness. Yes. Amen? Yes. In John chapter 17, verse number 8, John 17 is unique, actually. It is the Lord's Prayer. The entire chapter is Jesus praying to the Father. I know we call our Father who art in heaven, how would we, we call that the Lord's Prayer, but really, that was the prayer the Lord gave to the disciples. He says, when you pray, pray this way. Yes, right. But truly, the entire chapter of John chapter 17 is Jesus praying, and he points out the uniqueness of this combination of words in verse number 8. In verse number 8 <clears throat> He says in his prayer, for I have given to them the words which you have given to me. And they have received them, and they have known surely that I came from you. And they have, what? Believed that you sent me. And again, just to emphasize, there's a difference between knowing something and believing. And the reality is you can do both. And you can even do one without the other. So I'm led today to talk about believing the love that God has for you and to show you how faith works by that love. In Galatians, the fifth chapter, in the sixth verse, that's where we get the text for this part of the message. The Bible says that for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision or nor uncircumcision availeth anything, but what availeth is faith working through love. Yes. I was reading this in my chapter, and I read it in the New Living Translation, and I wanted to show you this because it, it helps to clarify it. It says, for when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, anybody here has put their faith in Christ Jesus? That's all of us, most of us. For when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, Jesus, there's no benefit with being circumcised or uncircumcised. There's no difference between the Jew or the Greek, the male or the female. Right. If we're in Christ, we're one in him. Amen? Yes, Amen. Yes. But what is important in Christ is faith expressing itself in love. Faith family, those on Facebook, I'm going to commend you for giving yourselves to this series of message to understand faith better than you've ever had in your life. Why? Because that's what's important in Christ. Yeah. You know, I've found I've been a child of God, seemed like all my life. I don't remember getting saved, but I do believe I am. Amen. <laughs> my dad's a pastor, so you know, when you grow up in church, you believe in Jesus from the time that you're a child. I did find him to be my Lord and God to be my God in my college age. But I knew him all along, amen? Yeah. It's just that when I became a young adult, he became my God, not just my father's God. Come on, yeah. he became my Jesus, yeah. not just yeah. father's Jesus, amen? Yeah. But, you know, I've been saved seemingly like all my life. I grew up in church, and uniquely enough, I've studied the word of God, and I believe, in my opinion, that grace is the biggest subject of the New Testament. Amen. And in my opinion, Faith is the biggest subject in the whole Bible. Amen. And then there's one better than that. The biggest subject in God is love. Yes. And that's the subject for today. Yes. And Paul had that revelation. He said, now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest, come on, y'all, the greatest of these three is what? Love. love. But faith, when you look at it, it is extremely important. It's the biggest message of the Bible. Why then, or how much important then is it for us to understand faith? Why? It's the biggest subject of the Bible. Amen. In the series, we've also looked at the fact that faith is important because it's how God operates. It's how we please God. And the Bible says that today, faith is important when it's worked by God. Love. Say this out loud. Faith works, Faith works. By, love. by love. Now, uh, for those of you that might be visiting, um, you need one of these. <laughs> now, I, this is the last week I'm going to use this as an example, okay? It's been four weeks, but, you know, if I came out and said you need one of these, the first question is like, why do I need that? Um, actually, this is a backflow preventer. If you have an irrigation system, you need one of these. Yeah. It prevents the water that's in the yard from ever being siphoned back into the house. It prevents it. How many of y'all know that's appreciated? Yeah. <laughs> but if you don't know how to work this, then it's of no beneficial yeah. use. Right. Mm -hmm. 
you can actually hook this thing up backwards and it will flow water into the house from the yard. How many of y'all know we need to know how faith works? Yeah. We know that it works by saying, mm -hmm. it works by doing, amen. Mm -hmm. But then there's these other little parts. Faith works by patience mm -hmm. yeah. and faith works by love. Yeah. Uh, what I'm sharing with you today is sharing with you how faith works mm -hmm. by love and how to work that specific part because you need it in order for it to work. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that's what we've been teaching over this series, that faith works by saying, faith works by doing, faith works by patience, and say the last one with me again, faith, faith works, works by, love. by love. Now, we learn that you can follow somebody else's example of faith. The Bible actually teaches us to be followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Yes. Yeah. So we used Joseph and his story last week as an example of how we work faith with patience. We've used others. We used Job as an example. But today I'm led by the Lord to use Jesus as an example of how faith works. All right. Now, oftentimes, because he is our Lord and Savior, and he is the Son of God, we don't rightly discern the body of Christ. We, we, we don't see him as we should when he walked on the planet. We essentially, too often, we see Jesus like Superman, born to parents that weren't really his parents, grew up with superhuman powers. You know, he could leap over buildings. He could stop a bullet. Come on. He's fast as an airplane and all of that, right? Yes. And, and I think we, we dehumanize Jesus to a degree where we cannot relate to him. He's not on our level. But remarkably, the, the amazing thing, he left all of his superhuman powers and took on our flesh so that we could relate right. to him. The greatest example of faith in the Bible is Jesus. Yes. Faith, Jesus lived his life from the time that he was young to the time that he left this planet. He lived his life by faith. Yes, sir. If we superimpose everything we've learned in this series on Jesus, we would ask ourselves, why is faith important to Jesus? Well, he loves the Father, and naturally every child wants to be pleasing to the Father. John chapter 8, verse 29, it says, Jesus said, and he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that, what, please him. Now, here's the beautiful part of that. You cannot please God without faith. So that means Jesus lived his life. Jesus did everything he did by being firmly persuaded. Yes. 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 Not by knowing. Yes. He did it by believing. Mm, this is so important for you to get. <clears throat> he lived by faith. He did everything he did by faith. The next question, okay, we understand well, why faith would be important to Jesus. Because he would want to please the Father. But, okay, faith is a firm persuasion. But how did, oh, this was a good question. How did Jesus get the faith that he got to do everything that he did? How did he get the faith? Did he have some superhuman son of God advantage of living life by faith and walking on water by faith and casting out devils by faith and, and doing all of them and raising the dead, which is by faith. Did he have some, some unique Son of God inside connection to living by faith that would give him an advantage over us? Or did he have to get faith the same way that we got faith? Oh, that's a good question. Come on now. So think about it. How did he get the faith that he got? We know he lived by faith because he pleased God. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. So how did he get? Now, faith is a firm persuasion. It's conviction based upon hearing. How do you get faith? Well, we learned in this series that you get faith by hearing an anointed message from God and accepting it as true. Yeah. 
is there any recorded time where Jesus sat and heard the word of God preached or taught in a way that he could understand and he accepted it as true and believed it? Yeah. I can imagine that he heard his mother tell him the story surrounding his birth. You know, when you were born, something supernatural happened. An angel appeared to me and told me that I was going to be your mom yeah. and that you would be the son of God. Yeah. And I told that angel that I never knew a man. Yeah. And even though Joseph is here and he looks like your father, but he's not your father, yeah. God is your father. Amen. Yeah. He's hearing that as a toddler, you know, as you, growing up as a child. He didn't do any miracles until like 30 years old. We do know that age 12, where was he? They got separated and he stayed in the temple hearing the word of yeah, God, yeah, yeah. obviously accepting it as true. When they found him, they asked him, what, 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 what are you doing? He told them, I must be about my father's yes. word. word. We're looking at how did he get the faith that he got? I imagine that he was, he was asking them questions about the scriptures. Right. Come on, there's a few people. Just so you know, when they were separated, he wasn't just playing at children's church. Come on. He was, he was asking them questions. You know, well, what, what about this right here? I don't understand what that means. And it was, well, this is that. And it's, oh, okay. And then what about this particular passage over here? And this probably is this right. What about that? I can't tell you the times that I've challenged you when you hear a message from God. Find yourself in the message. Yeah. Find out what is, what part of this verse of scripture is God saying to me. He was in the synagogue finding himself in the word of God. Yes, sir. In other words, he didn't grow up knowing he was the son of God. He grew up believing he was the son of God. Yeah. And if you believe something long enough and hard enough, you'll get to the place that you know, that you know, that you know, know you are who he says you are. Yes, sir. You can get beyond the point of no believing that you are more than a conqueror. You can get to the point where you know you are more than a conqueror. You can get to the point where not only do you believe that you're a child of God, you can know that you're a child of God. You can get to the point where not only do you believe that God loves you, you can get to the point where you know he loves you. Matter of fact, in, 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 in his baptism in Matthew chapter 3, so Mary, she probably gave him an anointing. He had experience. Now, how many of y'all know you can have an experience with God in a supernatural way and it'll leave you firmly persuaded? Yes. Yes. On the day in which he was baptized, the heavens opened. The Holy Spirit descended. He heard a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. How many of y'all know hearing that? Oh, man. I'm going to be firmly persuaded that I am the son of God, right? I mean, that was supernatural. Every time he saw his cousin, he would say, Behold, the sinless lamb, the lamb of God who's come to take away the sin of the world. If you hear that enough growing up, I'm sure Joseph told him the story. Man, when you were born, I was about to divorce your mom. I wasn't going to marry her. I was going to put her away privately. But an angel appeared to me, and I married her. He yeah. her stepbrothers and stepsisters. So. Yeah. <laughs> What am I showing you? I'm showing you that he did everything he did by faith. Amen. Not by knowing. He did it first by faith. He found himself in the word of God. Well, once you get faith, you got to know how to work it. Did Jesus work his faith? Oh, yeah, faith works by saying. He spoke to a fig tree and it died. Yeah. Come on. He said, you can speak to a mountain and it would move. Amen. Yeah. He didn't know that? Yeah. Also in John chapter 5, verse 19, Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son of Man can do nothing of himself. What he sees the Father do for whatever he does, the Son does in the likes of the And in other words, he's the one that taught the message. Whatever he says, do it. Amen. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Right? Because faith works by doing, doing whatever God tells you to do. Yeah. Regardless of how crazy it looks Amen. like. Yeah. But also, we learned that faith works by patience. Did you all know that Jesus was one of the most, and is, the most patient person ever? Yes. The Holy Spirit brought this to my remembrance. Well, what example can I give your people concerning Jesus working his faith by patience? 
And he reminded me of Matthew 26 and 53. Jesus said, do you think that I cannot now pray to my father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? Word. This was right after the Garden of Gethsemane and Peter cut off that soldier's ear and put it back on and healed the man. And he talked to them and he's like, look, you know, we don't have to try to get out of this. I want to go to the cross. I want to give up my life. And I've been telling y'all I'm going to do it ever since Matthew chapter 16. Yeah. So Peter, put your sword up, man. Yeah. Don't yeah. you think that I could pray right now if I wanted to quit, if I wanted to give yeah. up? Yeah. I could say this is enough. I'm not going to the cross. I'm not. No, no, they ain't putting that nail in my head. Come on, y'all got to talk to me now. Y'all yeah. 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 hit me one too many times. If they spit on me again, I'm giving up. Now I need you to find yourself. Why is it that you're so ready to give up on that marriage? I know it seems like hell. I know that you've been in such a financial hardship so long that you want to quit living right and you want to get it another way. But I'm here to tell you, faith works by being patient. Yes, sir. Amen? Yes, Jesus sir. could have quit. Yes. Jesus could. He didn't have to go. It was his choice. Right. Oh, man, I could stay there for a minute, but then I can preach it last week. That's all right. He didn't give up on it. He could have took the easy way out. But he went all the way. And my assignment is to show you that he did it by believing that God loved him. He went through the hardest situation in his life. Not by knowing but by believing that he loved him. Because that's the time when you really need to move. Yes. Because the situation looked like mm -hmm. even God's left you. Right. Yes. People abandon you, leave you, treat you like you're nothing, yeah. Man. throw you out. Well, you got to believe. Amen. Yes. Amen. It's a tough thing when your own mama don't believe in you no more, man. Amen. All right. <laughs> right? It's in that time, in those hardest times, when you got to believe it. He's our example. I need you to see this. Okay? It's Isaiah 53. You remember, he read this beforehand. The Bible says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. In other words, he knew in advance that some bad things were going to happen to him. Matter of fact, I mean, several times in Matthew chapter 16, when Peter got the revelation that Jesus was the Son of God, he said from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and from the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. He showed his disciples that he's going to be crucified. He showed his disciples that he's going to suffer really, really. How did he get that? Because he read in Isaiah what they were going to do yeah. to the man who was called Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That he would be bruised and hurt through situations. But he would be raised the third day. Yeah. He would tell them again and again and again. And it, what, what was he doing? That was Jesus working his faith to believe to be raised from the dead. Yeah. Because how are you raised from the dead? You're raised from the dead by faith. Yeah. That's what you hear. It wasn't an automatic. He had to believe that God would raise him from the dead. Yeah. I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you line upon line. In John chapter 17 and verse 24, he was praying about you and I. He said, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory for you have given me. For you loved me, and I'll put that in bold, yes. before the foundation of the world. Question, does Jesus know beyond a shadow of a doubt? That God the Father loves him. Yeah. According to this verse. Yeah. Before he went to the cross. Mm -hmm. He knew the love of God. Right. Yes. Yes. But what I have to show you. Is that when he got on the cross. It was at that moment. That he had to believe. Yes. Because based on the circumstance. Yeah. It looked like even God. Yeah. Forsaken him. Yeah. Yeah. He continued, verse 25, Oh, righteous Father, he's right in the middle of this prayer. The world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. Yeah. 
and have declared, I've declared to them your name, and will declare it, that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. Does he know that God loves them? He knows it so much so. He says, I know that you love me. I've known you. Yes. And I want this same love that you've loved with me. I want that to be in them. Why? Because if you love me, though if you love them the way that you love me, then there's no difficulty that they'll ever face in life oh, yeah. that'll cause them to want to give yeah. up and quit. Yeah. It could look like real bad for year after year. It could look like I'll never get married. It'll look like I can never get healed. It could look like I'll never have this baby. Yes. It could look like things will never change. Yes, but sir. if you love them with that kind of love, where well, if you love me, then I know they'll be okay because I've gone through a lot and I've been through the worst, but I know that you love me and you'll yes. never leave me alone. Yes. Lord God, it's that you love to yeah. Man, this is good, I'm telling you. Yeah. Find yourself in the scripture real quick. Let me take you back one before I show it again. In 1 John chapter 4, we read this. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Yeah. You're going through the worst trial of your life. But let me ask you, are you doing it with confidence that you're going to be all right? I know this is an extreme difficulty right now, but are you in boldness in the day of judgment? The day of judgment is the day of test and trial. It's when the prosecutor comes against you with charges. The devil is called the accuser of the brethren. He's telling God that you ain't no good. And look at this picture. She was drinking and then she was running around and he wasn't living right and he don't deserve your blessings, God. Come on. He's just printing, he's just putting out his case and you feel it, you sitting over there feeling guilty as all get out, right? Because you remember that, right? And so now it's working on your mind and you're losing your boldness. But then the Bible says that we have an advocate, which is a lawyer. Yeah. And his name is Jesus, yeah. and he's gonna plead your case. Yeah. And so, even though you do got a little dirt on your hands, the the the, the, the defense attorney, the advocate Jesus, he's yeah. got some evidence to present to the court. Yeah. Oh, glory to God! He's gonna deal with all your dirt. Yeah. He's got to introduce it to evidence. My blood, the blood of Jesus. Yes. <laughs> and they have no more sin because you cleanse them of all their sin. And the gavel comes down, not guilty. <laughs> yes, this is good preaching. Right. See, when, when love is developed, how is love developed? Love is developed in you when you know it and believe it. Yes. It's not fully matured if you aren't there where you believe it the way that you should. You doubt that God loves you because you know the money is not there. Then it's not developed, and what's going to happen is you're going to be afraid that the money won't be there. Yeah, yeah. Because you haven't meditated. What I submit to you is all his life, Jesus meditated on how much God loved him, and then in the end of his life, in the most trying difficulty of his life, he needed that because now where it doesn't look like it, he has to believe it. He believed it, and his faith worked, and, his, and, and through that faith, he was raised from the dead. Yeah. Because that actually kicked faith. Then you need to get out your Bible and look up every scripture that talks about how much God loves you. Yes, yes. Matter of fact, do you really know how much God loves you? Amen. Is there any scripture that shows you, that teaches you exactly how much he loves? John chapter 17. Y'all know I was going to show you, right? <laughs> Verse number 23. Same prayer. Amen. He said, I and them and you and me that they may be made perfect. That was a, what were just talking about? Perfected. Amen. That they may be developed in love. That the world may know that you sent me. I pray for them that the world may know that you have loved them as you have loved me. That means that God loves you just as much as he loves you. Amen. Meditate on that. Amen. When you're contemplating quick. Meditate on that. 
when you don't see how you'll be able to make ends meet. Meditate on that when the doctor says this is incurable. All right. Meditate on that when your child is acting crazy. Meditate on that in the darkest temptation of your life. Meditate on what? Meditate on the fact that God has loved you just as much as he loved Jesus. Yes. Say it out loud. God loves me. God loves just, me. As just as much as, as, much. as he loved Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Now I'm going to show you in these next few verses that Jesus literally used his faith in the love of God to believe for his resurrection of the dead. In other words, he, when he went to the cross, he didn't have proof that he was going to come back alive. If he did, then he had a superhuman advantage over us, and he can't be our example because, you know, he did it because he was the son of God. He somehow knew in advance. He didn't believe it. He didn't do it by faith. He knew it. And so he just went through it and went through the process. I submit to you just the opposite of that. There's no proof. Just like for us, there's no proof that you'll be able to ever be successful in life or be successful in your body or in your marriage. There's no proof that this marriage will ever be anything other than it already is. I gotta tell you the story first. So let me read this. In Acts chapter 2, verse 25, <clears throat> David says this concerning Jesus. I foresaw the Lord and always before my face. He is at my right hand and I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart rejoices and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in hell or Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. You will make me. That's future tense. I'm not full of joy right now. But you'll make me full of joy. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you about the patriarch David. David's the one who wrote that. That's in the book of Psalms. Let me speak freely to you about David. He is both dead and buried. And his tomb is with us today. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him of the fruit of his body, according to, his, to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He foreseeing this folk concerning the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, nor did his flesh see corruption. There was a time where I was counseling a woman and her husband that came in, this is around the year 2000, 18 years ago. And it marked me in a way that I'll never forget. Now, I believe no matter the difficulties of life and marriage, you can have a happy marriage even in the worst of circumstances. Amen. So I'm there, I'm ministering the word of God, and I can only say what the truth of the word says, God hates divorce. Yes. And obviously yes. she came in because she got to the point where I'm ready to divorce him. I'm ready to quit. Quit on this man. At one point, I believed to marry him and we would be happy, but he's treated me so bad. And I remember she's in, in the midst of counseling. Something came over her. And her face almost changed. And she says, God wants me to stay in this man. I said, yes, ma'am. This marriage is hurting me. And she looked up at me and she said, then God doesn't love me. When she said that, she wasn't just talking. She believed that. She believed, believed that God doesn't love her. I could quote scriptures all day long for God so loved the world that he gave, blah, blah, blah. But in what she's in, and at that moment, because of the calculation of that formula, she was willing to do what most of us are not. She verbalized what she really felt. 
Maybe you're in that situation that you're in and it feels like death. It's hurting you. Yes. And you're struggling to actually believe that God loves you because if God loves me, he would get me out of this. He wouldn't leave me in this. And it's been far too long. God wants me to stay in this. This is hurting me. That God doesn't love me. We can't stay there, folks. We've got to learn to believe that he loves us no matter what he looked like. And what I submit to you is that when Jesus was on the cross, it got to the place where it looked like even God left him. Yes. Yes. Oh, you remember the story? He's literally nailed to the cross, blood gushing out every part of his body as it were and at one point for the first time ever Jesus says something that scripturally is wrong yes. All right. he is the word of God he's the truth he only says the truth and yet he's on this cross and in that moment he said my God my God why have you forsaken me In that moment, he's feeling the weight of the sin of the world. And check this out. When you sin, you are separated from God. Yes. When God put all the sins of humanity, past, present, and future on Jesus, oh, yes. he was separated from him. Here's David's reality. If I made my bed in hell, there you are. If you're on a high. How many of y'all know God was still there with him? Yes. But in that moment, it seemed like... Now I don't know like I used to know. And that's when this other thing called believe in the love has to kick in. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where it looks like, somebody say looks like, where it looks like God even himself has forsaken you, then train yourself like Jesus trained yeah. us himself by finding yourself in the word of God. Jesus found himself through the prophecy of David and said he's not talking about David that's me and he used that to defeat death, hell and the grave and by faith in God he was raised from the dead and with that in mind let me walk you through this verse again with a different perspective now he said men and brethren I'm not David could not have been talking to or about himself. Amen. He was talking about the Lord. He's a prophet. Amen. A prophet will see things in the future. There's yes. gifts and anointings that come. Yes. Discerning of the spirit is seen into the realm of the spirit. Words of wisdom are a fragmentary yes. part of the mind of God concerning the events future tense. Listen to what he said. In Acts 2.25, he says, For David says concerning Jesus... Quote, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. Now, that's not David, that's Jesus. Now, Jesus read that and he found himself. He said, wait a minute, that's not David, that's me. And so Jesus is reading this just like he read a multitude of things in the scriptures concerning himself. He saw himself. Notice, I, Jesus, foresaw the Lord God always before my face. What that means is Jesus had a vision of God. Yes. Yes. That's easy. Come on, somebody. Yes. Right? I foresaw the Lord. I had a discerning spirit. And in other words, at some point in his walk, maybe one night when he was on the mountain praying so long. Come on. Maybe when he was on the mountain transfiguration and the Lord revealed himself to him yes. and Moses and Elijah were there. Come on, somebody. Yes. Maybe at one point along the way, he had a revelation of God yes. and it marked him forever. He said, I foresaw the Lord. He was always before my face. He's at my right hand. Yeah. I will not be shaken. Shaken when? Shaken when I'm in the worst situation of my life. Uh, when I go through the worst situation of my life, I will not be shaken. How can yeah. you say that? Because I saw the Lord in the bank. Come on, somebody. Yeah. That's how you're going to get through what you get through. Is because you know on the front side that you're going to be all right. Yeah. 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 You yeah. can go through the worst of the worst. There are stories of people being prisoners of war, left behind enemy lines, and year after year, and year after year, but then one day there was somebody coming from yeah. somebody, yeah. and they got them out of that situation.
situation, and though you may have felt forsaken by God, by your family, by your friends, by whatever, hey, hold on to your faith in the love of God. Because love will never leave you in a bad situation. Yes, sir. Give me yes, a <laughs> I can tell it, that's my sister. <laughs> love, say it out loud. Love, love. will never. Will never. Now everybody say it. I'm gonna say it again. Come on, everybody on Facebook, say this out loud. Love, love. will never, will never leave me, leave me in a bad situation. Bad situation. That's good preacher. Right yes, sir. If your situation is bad, hang on. Amen. In a little time, faith works this way. Come on. You want to work your faith? Mm -hmm. Then believe yeah. that love will never leave you in a bad situation. Amen. If you can't calculate, well, I can't stand this person. Mm -hmm. I absolutely want to get away from them. <laughs> I don't even want to be around them. <laughs> but wait a minute. <laughs> love will never leave me in a bad situation. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't have to leave them. I don't really know how this whole thing's gonna play out, but I'm gonna be all right. <laughs> Right? I don't know how, I really don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm going to be all right because love, yeah. right. hey, come on now, we'll never, you've got to believe that, and he did, keep going a little bit, pardon, but I didn't preach myself happy, I'm like, no, but, you know, I'm having fun now, right? Man, That's all right. this is for somebody, <laughs> therefore my heart rejoiced, he was able to rejoice in advance. My heart, my tongue was glad. I could tell y'all again and again and again about the bad stuff I was going through. Why? Because I know I'm coming out on the other yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Moreover, my flesh will rest in this hope. His flesh was literally beaten to a pulp. Right? Yes. He's talking about will as future tense. I'm even going to be okay physically. Why? Because you will not leave me in a bad situation. Yes. yes. David foresaw this, not of himself. He saw the Lord seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. He saw Jesus getting the revelation yeah. that God won't. So I'm willing to go to hell. Why? Because I know you won't leave me. Yeah. I'm yeah. willing to go through what I'm going to go yeah. through. Yeah. Why? Because I know you're not going to leave yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. He will not allow your Holy One to see the rest. You may need, you may know your ways of life. You may, you will make me full of joy in your presence. Etc. 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 Y'all getting that? Amen. All right, let me close with this. All right. So we talked about marriage, right? Well, Hebrews thirteen and four says marriage <clears throat> is honorable among all, and the bed is undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Yes, He will. Yes, word. No matter what you're going through in your marriage, and the worst that you can imagine seemingly is when somebody steps out and does something wrong. Right. This is no one. But even in the worst of situations, there's still hope. Yes. Yes. It's honorable for you to stay yes. in that situation. Yes. And God will deal with whoever is doing you wrong. Yes. Oh, yes. Stay out of this way. But what's unique about this is verse 5. Now, we all know, know in verse 5, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. But in the context, he's talking about what could be one of the worst situations of life. Mm -hmm. And even in the context of what one, is, one of the worst situations in life, you need to have this revelation. Let your conduct in that marriage with that child, your lifestyle, while you're expecting to believe the miracle to happen, let your conduct be without covetousness. That's wanting what other people have. Don't see them. Don't see what they have and want it. Oh, I want that. Oh, I want that. No. Be content with such as you do have. Yes. Yes. Not that you're going to stay there. Amen. Yes. But he's going to get you on the other side. He's going to give you the desires of your heart, but don't want it in and of the flesh. Amen. Why? Because he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm not going to leave you in a bad situation. You don't have to want what they have because I've already given you what you got. Amen. Amen. And the way you receive it is by faith. Amen. I told you the last part of this is very simply, love works by forgiveness. Yep. Love works by forgiveness. Jesus teaching the greatest message on faith, what things, whoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. 
But the very next verse, he says, and whenever you stand praying, if you have, if you have anything to get somebody else, forgive him. That your father in heaven may also. Your, your love, faith works by love. If you hold stuff against people that treated you wrong, you're blocking up the vessel. You're preventing your faith to work the way it's never forget. I mean, think about it. Jesus as our example of faith working by love. Yeah, he believed the love, but also he forgave those folks that yeah. pierced him in the side. Yeah. Come on, he forgave those folks that yeah. nailed him in the hand. Yeah. On the cross in Luke 23, 20, uh, 34, Jesus said, Father, say it with me, Father, Father forgive them, them, for they do not know what they do. So while you're working your faith, while working your love, you'll also have to work your forgiveness. Amen. Let it go. Don't hold it. Don't stop bringing it up. Don't bring a person's past up to them. Now, if you're communicating to connect for clarity, that's one thing. But if you're pointing out their wrongdoing for beyond a point of clarification so how we can move forward, then you have you forgiven them for that? Good question. Did y'all get anything out of the way? Thank y'all for joining us in. Stay tuned in another part of this as we get into it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.